First off, I just want to know, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. Yeah. You know, still staying prayed up, uh, still engaging in the community, doing yeah. what I can, where I can, uh, trying to be a good dad and yeah. um, just trying to make a good living day by day. Yeah. How have the past few years been for you? Uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, from the perspective of uh, seeing where there's a lot of love, seeing where even still there may be some questions, mm -hmm. uh, which is fair. Uh, but all in all, good. Take me back to that day when you were arrested. What was your reaction? How did you tell your wife? Uh, it, it was the lowest of lows in terms of how one could ever feel about anything. Mm. Uh, and uh, it was not the kind of thing that that me nor my family uh, were, were proud of. I was very embarrassed by it, mm -hmm. um, very sorry for it, uh, because that's not Patrick Cannon. Mm -hmm. It's not the true Patrick Cannon. Uh, and obviously we'll probably talk more about that piece of it, but uh, it was just a, a low point in my life. And I'm glad today that that low point is behind me mm -hmm. and I'm in a better place today with yeah. regards to uh, what I believe in, mm -hmm. uh, what I know better of, uh, and how I know that I can be an asset to our yeah. city. Why did, you do, why did you do what you did? You know what? There was no real rhyme or reason to it. it made zero sense. Mm -hmm. uh, and I would just say to anybody, look, always, you know, it's said that you should uh, think before you speak. I would venture to say, act. I mean, think before you act, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, doing so in a way that can be detrimental to your family, mm -hmm. detrimental to your community, and of course even yourself is something that you never ever want to go through, Yeah, you know? Yeah. I wasn't there, of course, but a colleague of mine was yeah. when he entered the courtroom and yeah. was dumbfounded to see you there yeah. alone. What was the call like to your wife? Uh, I didn't make a call until I got in the car. I was on my way in. And at that point, um, it was one where, uh, I mean, it's, it's indescribable. Mm. I can't find the words to tell you what that was like. Uh, but I made my way on there. And uh, at that point, it was still like a deer in headlights, mm. right? Uh, and, and remained for me through that process. Yeah up until really it was time for me to go on. Did you learn your lesson? Oh, absolutely. Uh, to, so much to the extent that I, it's like when you get that one whipping, mm. hmm, that's a really good one, and you don't want it back, mm -hmm. uh, that's learning your lesson. That's where I am. So absolutely. How did this idea come about over the past, I guess, few years to get back into public office? You know something? I, I'm one of the few, so they say, native Charlotteans. Mm -hmm. And I have a genuine love for our city. That said also, and in the wake of me asking for forgiveness, right, I feel like I really can't get that true level of forgiveness mm -hmm. until I'm able to really get back to a place where I can show people that I still have worth, mm. just like the worth I had when, you know, I served over the years. One, my love, and then two, and more importantly, uh, the ability just to want to help somebody, to help themselves, mm. to be in a place where they can live, work, raise a family, and recreate. Those were the drivers that said to me, you know what, get back in if you can. And if it will be the will of the people to allow you to get back in, do a bang up job. Would you say though at the time that you took your office for granted? Uh, I would say I didn't make the best decisions that one could have made and should have made. Who did you talk to about this? Who said, you know what, I'll get behind you and, and let's, let's give you a second shot? You know what, I think there were more people that met me before I met them uh, mm -hmm. at the place of saying, you, Patrick, need to re-engage. Who said those we things? We want you though? back. You know, believe it or not, I had to. I came back here for something else uh, when I was away, mm -hmm. and there were people that were actually inside the uh, 
detention center that said, hey, we're waiting for you to come back. That was before I even got back. This is, these are people in law enforcement themselves. Mm -hmm. So that piece I was humbled by, but mm -hmm. then when I did get back indeed, because I mean, you hear stuff, but you just don't know sometimes, you know, yeah. you're going through and, but when I got back, there were even more people that would just say, hey, you need to re-engage. Do you deserve a second chance? I would hope that people would think that I deserve a second chance. Why should people trust you after you did what you did? How do you gain the trust of voters who you are asking to put a check mark by your name? Hmm. You gain that level of trust by one, asking for, yes, yeah, still for forgiveness, right? And asking for that second chance. Because guess what? There's no way that you can ever find your way to be able to trust me if you don't give me the opportunity. But why should you be respected with that trust? Because over the years in which I have served our community, um, I have shown that I can be trusted. Mm -hmm. I've shown that I can be trusted because when it came down to having leadership that needed to be fiscally conservative and socially responsible, we represented that. Have you spoken to Mayor Vi Lyles since making this decision or beforehand? Was she one of the ones who cheered you on? What has that relationship been like? Vi's been kind. Uh, the mayor's been kind, I should say. And uh, the last time we saw each other, uh, it was around Christmas. Mm -hmm. And we were both at the mall, and she had her grandbaby. I was with my son. And she's like, Patrick. And I was like, oh, bye. You know, and uh, we went over and talked for a little bit and uh, kept it moving. But Vi uh, has been nice. Vi was kind enough, even when I was away, to write to me. Hmm. And Vi said to me, she said, it's, it's amazing because it seems like you're still here because the stuff that's going through is like when you were here. Yeah. Because what happens is that you always plan, you do your budgets for the forward, year. right, yeah. two years. Mm -hmm. So even though I was away for two years, or really 18 months, it was like I was still here mm -hmm. because everything that was going on then, I had a hand in. Yeah, what did she write you? What did she write me? Yeah. She basically wrote me to let me know that she was thinking about me, that was hoping that all was you know, well. She was praying for me and, um, uh, and just the latter of what I just shared with you about yeah. things still seeming like um, like I was still here yeah. because of things that were being approved and moving forward on. If you get elected, what are your priorities? What do you want to make happen for this city? You know what? Economic development is still key for me. It's still first and foremost because uh, when I look at poverty and what people are going through in our community, uh, it's sad. It's really, really sad. And um, it creates in me a burning spirit and a desire to want to do what I can to be about trying to create uh, better paying jobs mm -hmm. for upward mobility. That's important. I know uh, you're focused on this campaign first for an at-large position, Absolutely. but I have to ask, will you ever run for mayor again? I have no interest uh, in running for mayor, mm. uh, largely in part because of this. I'm used to walking in high grass, weeds, uh, wet stuff. That's where the true things mm. take place when you're talking about what happens on the city council level. We have a council manager form of government. There's been this thought process, even when I was going through what I was going through, that somehow or another we have a strong mayor form of government, that the mayor does this and he, you know, they, they do that. No, we, we, we do not have that. It's a council manager form of government. And quite frankly, uh, you know, the, the manager's office is running the city. Mm -hmm. Members of council, they're there. The mayor's there to facilitate. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to be in a position to do more than facilitate and to cut ribbons and to make a certain number of appointments. Mm -hmm. Not down in the post because the, 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 the strong thing about that office is that the mayor is able to set the agenda by what he or she decides they want to place at the forefront for the council to look at and to consider. Mm -hmm. That's a big something. But when it comes down to legislating, the members of the of the body have that, and I think we have some people that have now begun to say, now begun to say, you know what, we recognize this is a council manager form of government, but we want to have more play and more say mm -hmm. in what's going on, yeah. and I and I commend the council for doing that because nobody, you don't want anybody thinking that you're rubber stamping everything yeah. that 
management brings by. Yeah. You have spoken here in front of me that you believe you're a changed person for the better. Uh, I so know that I'm a changed you person. You know that you're a changed person, that's correct. Yes. Um, last question, speaking to the people who since you decided to file for this at-large position have said he betrayed his office, no thank you. What do you say to them? I say to them, you know, if there's a place in you that will allot yourself to have a level of forgiveness, a level of understanding that people can make mistakes and do make mistakes, and that you are willing to give me, like anyone else, an opportunity to redeem themselves and make good on, yes, what they've done in the past, but even more so what they will do now in the present and the future, I'd be so honored yeah. and so humbled to have your support to move our city forward.